Today, I'm going to show you how to study Japanese in Japan from your initial Google search looking for a school to finding an apartment to starting your first day of class and doing it all on a budget. Three! Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Empathetic Wanderers. My name is Jeff, and on this channel, I give you ways to deepen your travel experience, um, access things that maybe you didn't think that you would be able to access, places and foods and things to do. Um, and one of the ways that I have always felt like you can do that is through language. Uh, I've been studying languages for my whole life. I've specifically been studying Japanese for uh, the past couple years, and so I decided to take the plunge and go ahead and do it in Japan. So I just wanted to go through the entire process from uh, when I first started looking up different agencies and schools to look into, the whole process of applying, uh, looking for an apartment, doing that in an affordable manner, and then all the way till now when I have started school. So if you like content like that, if you're looking to study abroad in uh, Japan, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, make sure to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of the other content, uh, as I'm sure that you are interested in Japan if you're planning on living there, uh, that I put out every single week uh, because I currently live in Tokyo, so there is a lot of that. I also put out a lot of content on Korea, as I was in Korea before Japan, and a lot of language content. So uh, be sure to check that out, and let's get to the video. All right, so the beginning part of this is obviously just looking it up on Google. So when I initially started looking, I I knew I wanted to be at an immersion school. Like I knew I wanted it to be a five day a week kind of like grind. Like I wanted, to, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do it right. So I just looked up different Japanese schools and I came up with probably about 10 that I could find in the Tokyo area. I knew I wanted to be in Tokyo. Um, but then I also found that there are these agencies, they're like intermediary agencies that are based in Tokyo, but they do all the communication with the school. Um, so initially I found a couple agencies and I settled down on one called uh, Gogo Nihon, which I actually had a great experience with. They answered all of my questions and I'm the type of person that asks a lot of questions. Um, and so they were always willing to answer all of them in detail. The people that I was talking to were native English speakers, which made it a lot um, easier and um, just quicker. Um, the one frustrating part was there was a, a little bit of a lag sometimes with response time. Um, so I would definitely just take into consideration that like if you're gonna try and do this like last minute, it probably is gonna at least be stressful if not not possible. So definitely give yourself some time. So basically the first way that it works with this agency and just to let you all know like I have an experience with one agency and I have an experience like a full experience with one school so you never know like with a different school it might vary a little bit but I'm pretty sure the general structure is the same so the first thing that they do when you reach out to the agency is just gonna be and actually also to schools because I, I had reached out to a couple schools they're just gonna ask you a couple like basic questions on who you are you know who you are, what your name is, how old you are, what you do for work, like where you're from, et cetera, et cetera. Um, just to get kind of an idea of what your intended purpose is. And then at least the agency that I went through, they gave me a list of different schools that they thought might work for me. And then I looked into those schools and I said, okay, well, you know, this one, this one might be a little bit harder. This one might be a little bit uh, easier, but you know, you spend more time at the one that's easier. They've got more events. Like there's, they vary. Um, so you go ahead and choose a school and then go forward with that. So once you've done that, they are going to send you the application that you can fill out for the actual school. Um, and then they're gonna also list a number of other things that you need to have, like uh, a photo, like a passport photo. Um, you have to show tax returns, like you have to, um, just so that they know like how much money, either if you're financing it or if maybe your parents are financing it, they're gonna need to see like guarantor is what they call it, the person that's like paying for its financial information so that they know that you're gonna be able to pay for the school, but also on top of that, be able to pay for like cost of living. Cause Tokyo is a quite expensive place to live. And so it's not just the tuition that you need to be able to pay. And I'll be really upfront with you about like, you know, how much I'm paying and stuff like that. 
so that you have an idea. But again, I'm not sure other schools could be more expensive or less expensive, um, just speaking to my experience. So they're gonna want like, and I'm just gonna read this off my computer, so pardon my averting eyes. Uh, they needed a copy of my passport. They needed uh, to see the passport pages from my passport on the past times that I've been in Japan. They needed a passport photo of me, a recent one. Uh, they needed my university diploma. Um, they needed to see a bank account like statement on the person paying for the schooling. Um, and it needed to have roughly 2 million yen in the account. Um, so each, I think each school has different guidelines, but it's about like, you need to have a certain amount in your bank account for them to feel like, okay, this person is going to have enough money to like live off of. 2 million yen is like, I think about 18,000 US dollars or maybe 17,000. I'm not exactly sure. And it may have changed by the time I put this video out, but, um, but that was what it was for me. And then I had to provide uh, two years of tax returns just to show what income was coming in for the past two years. And then after that, they're gonna send you some documents that you have to sign. Uh, once you get all of those documents done, the agency will go ahead and apply for you through the school. And you'll wait to hear from the school uh, as to whether or not that they have accepted you. Uh, just to be clear, uh, my tuition costs about $600 per month. And the way that they had it was you could either pay for six months or you could pay for 12 months. Um, so you can decide, um, again, the school will determine what they think, but for the particular school that I'm going to, um, it was, it was uh, six months or 12 months and I got to choose. If they go ahead and accept you, then you'll move on to the next part of the process. The next part of the process is somewhat of a waiting game. Uh, so once the school accepts you, they are going to apply for you to be a student um, at their school through Japanese immigration. So I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what they did, but essentially they, uh, I guess, sent in paperwork to Japanese immigration in Japan and then what you're waiting on is Japanese immigration to say, okay, this person can have a student visa and that person will send you an official document So the document that Japanese immigration has to send you is called a certificate of eligibility. And it's essentially the official document from the Japanese government that you need to present to your respective consulate. So it is kind of what turns into your visa. So it's just a waiting game. Uh, they, the agency or the school will let you know when immigration um, has decided whether or not to send you a, they call it a COE or a certificate of eligibility. And then depending on how long it takes to get to you, um, it will be delivered. And then once you get it, and I, I'm from the United States, so I'm speaking on behalf of United States citizens because I don't know what the rules are at different consulates, but Japanese consulates in the United States, you don't need an appointment to apply, but you do uh, need to go up to the consulate. The next part will be going to the consulate. So once I received my certificate of eligibility, um, which I, I basically did like the next day, I just took that to the Japanese consulate in Los Angeles and they have like an application form that you have to fill out before you get there. You have to bring in a passport photo. I had to bring in a copy of my certificate of eligibility as well as the original copy and then obviously my passport. So I gave all of that information to them, uh, handed it in, and then they gave me like a little slip that told me when I could come back. I think it was four business days later. Um, so went back four business days later. It was super easy. Grabbed my passport um, and have my visa. The certificate of eligibility will stay inside of your passport 
um, and then when you enter Japan, they will take it out. So leave it in your passport. The consulate should tell you this, but leave it in your passport. And then once you get to Japanese immigration in Japan, they will remove that official document. They won't remove your visa, obviously. They'll remove the certificate of eligibility that Japanese immigration sent you. So once you have all of this, you're kind of set from kind of big picture level. Once you have a visa and the certificate of eligibility, you'll also get a like a, almost a letter of intent to study at the school from the school. So once you have those documents, you can apply for apartments and it's kind of the necessary documentation that they need. So you're probably not gonna be able to look for an apartment before you get, I mean, you can look, but apply for an apartment before you get this documentation. I just did, I just went through an agency, like just a typical real estate agency. I think it's, well, it's through uh, in, it's through a website or company called Gaijin Pot. Gaijin means foreigner. Um, and it's like a company that helps like foreigners with life in Japan. And one of the facets of this company is helping with apartments. And so basically I found an apartment that I liked and reached out and Gaijin Pot got back to me and they were like, well, this is what it costs. And basically they're going to just like go over the basics, right? How much it's gonna cost in the beginning because uh, one thing to know about renting a place in Japan is there's a number of like initial costs that you don't get back. So there is kind of an upfront cost associated with getting an apartment and it's not just a deposit, which is kind of like what we traditionally know in the United States. Um, there are sometimes is a deposit. There's sometimes what's called key money, which is money that you don't get back. It's just like this lump sum of money. There are apartments that don't have that and there are like, you know, buildings and, you know, real estate agencies that are specifically catered towards foreigners and so they're gonna find those apartment complexes for you. Gaijin Pod did that. So, um, and then on top of that, there's like other associated costs like insurance and like um, sometimes they, they need to change the lock and it's like non-negotiable. Um, there's obviously an agency fee if you go through an agency. So uh, my initial fees, my rent is because I'm trying to spend very little money. I'm living pretty far outside of central Tokyo. It's gonna take me about an hour to get into to, to central Tokyo, um, but I'm only paying about, I think 480 US dollars uh, per month, which is really cheap and it's a nice place. So uh, the majority of places that I saw that were in central Tokyo, like cheap places were like 800, 900, 1000 USD. So um, on top of that rent, there was another like $750 that I had to pay in initial costs. Uh, so in total, it was about uh, it was about twelve hundred dollars that I had to pay up front, and that was for the first month's rent and this initial cost, which is just an important tidbit to know that you're not just going to be paying the first month's rent; you're also going to be paying this other thing. Uh, all of the other initial costs that I saw were between like one and three thousand U.S. dollars. Um, the more they are, obviously, the more fancier the place. Um, but yeah. And then one other thing to know is that most apartments contracts in Japan are for two years. I spent a lot of time in the beginning looking, trying to find like a place that was a month to month or um, trying to find a year long lease because I don't plan on not living in Japan for more than a year, but I also like just am super hesitant about the idea of signing a two year contract. Um, but I started reaching out to some apartments and just said like, is this a negotiable thing? And for some of them, it was totally negotiable. It was like, yeah, you can just break the contract. You just have to give us a month's notice or something like that. Um, for others, you could do it, but it would incur like a penalty of like a month's rent or two months rent. Um, so just if you find a place that you like and it says two, two year contract and you're not interested in staying for two years, just reach out and ask. Um, and you know, you can ultimately see what's in the contract and if it doesn't say that there's a penalty, then there's no penalty. So don't be alarmed by that because I know that that was like stressing me out a lot. And then once you apply through the agency, they are going to basically reach out to the property manager. The property manager is gonna say, you know, yes or no. And then once that happens, they'll ask you to pay this initial fee with the rent. Um, 
the reality is if you're coming from another country, you're likely going to have to see or to like apply for and pay for an apartment before you see it in person, which is very weird coming from the United States. So unless you have like enough money to pay for an Airbnb or a hostel for two weeks, which I could, but like it was, it just doesn't make sense in my situation then you're probably gonna have to find a place and, and just do it from your home country. If you don't, you, you're just gonna have to go through the whole process, which has taken me about two weeks. Um, and so you're gonna need another place to stay. And then on top of that, some of these places don't come with furniture. And so you just have to take that into consideration that like, you know, like, uh, my place doesn't have a bed, so I like, have to figure out how to get a bed there, uh, and I'm like living quite far outside of Tokyo, so. Another thing to know uh, that kind of the next step of the process, once I got my apartment and got everything figured out, was furniture. So my place actually didn't come with a fridge or a washing machine. Um, some of them do, and some of them don't. And so I was kind of like, oh gosh, I'm gonna have to either buy one or where do I, you know. The nice thing about this agency was that they have like a partner that they work with that you can rent these things for a fairly affordable price and it's like based on a certain amount of time. Um, so I'm gonna be able to rent a fridge and rent a washing machine and any other appliances that I need. I mean, they had like a list of so many. So I would imagine that any of the foreigner um, centric real estate agencies are probably going to have a similar service or at least be able to direct you towards a similar service um, but uh, and it's very affordable I think I'm paying like $150 US dollars for a fridge for 12 months and I think I'm paying something similar for the uh, washing machine for 12 months um, Obviously, the longer that you rent it for, the cheaper it is per month. Um, but yeah, so that is totally doable. And then IKEA also has a delivery service. Um, so if you find things at IKEA that you wanna bring to your apartment, just make sure that you have your correct address and make sure that you're gonna be in the apartment when they're gonna deliver it, but they will deliver it all to you because um, IKEA is in Tokyo Bay, which is a bit far if you're living like on the uh, western side of Tokyo um, or just really anywhere. I mean, it can just be a hassle to get anything from IKEA, but uh, certainly like a mattress or something like that. So that is all doable. And so from here, we'll move on to Wi-Fi. So as you can imagine, uh, all of my work is online. So Wi-Fi is very important to me. Um, and so I've been trying to figure that out. Um, there are a number of services that you can go with in Japan. You can, if you're not looking to just like immediately get Wi-Fi, you can always go to Bic Camera, which is like an electronics big store. It's like a chain. And you can just at least get yourself a SIM card for your phone. Um, it's like about 30 US dollars for three gigabytes or yeah, three gigabytes of data that lasts for 30 days, unless you, you know, supersede three gigabytes of data in 30 days, but um, pretty affordable. But on top of that, if you want, um, you can go through some companies. There are a number of services that you can go through. I'm going through a service called uh, Ninja Wi-Fi, which um, I can just pick up at the airport. So uh, that makes it a lot easier. And it's also a mobile um, Wi-Fi unit. So um, I can use it on my phone and I can just bring it home, plug it in and use it on my computer. Um, and that was, like, I think it's like 70 US dollars per month. So I don't have a phone plan, so I don't mind spending that because I don't really call people. I just need the internet. So um, that is pretty easy too. And you can just pick it up at the airport. And then when you're leaving, you just drop it off at the same place that when you're leaving. And then the last part uh, is just health insurance. So any of these schools are gonna go, are gonna give you NHI, which is the National Health Insurance Program in Japan. Um, the only thing that you have to do is you have to apply for health insurance, which 
requires that you go to your ward office, which is what they call it, once you have your apartment. So this is all stuff that you can do once you get to Japan. Um, when you arrive in Japan with your student visa, you're gonna get a card called the Dairu card. Um, and that is, you need that in order to, and bring that with you to um, apply for national health insurance, um, which is awesome. Thanks so much for watching. Um, I hope that that was helpful. I'm gonna go ahead and put down all of the steps in the comments below, or in the description below, but let me know in the comments if there's anything I missed or anything that you were unclear on, as I'm certainly happy to, uh, to clear up any, um, confusion, um, but that is pretty much every step that I had over the past, you know, over the five months about that it took for me to go from, you know, initially searching on Google where I would go to school to actually getting into school. Uh, so if you like that content, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my, my videos. Um, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of the content. Check out the Japan playlist that I've got on my channel as it's all of the past vlogs that I've done in Japan. Also make sure you check out the Japanese playlist as I do some language lessons. So if you're looking uh, to learn a little bit before you come to Japan, that's going to be really helpful. Uh, I really appreciate you all watching. Uh, let's just keep being empathetic, keep wandering, keep spreading positivity. Have a wonderful day and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye.